I Nilo Fazirgaon welcomes you to the fresh episode on first part of monopolistic competition. In this script we shall discuss the introduction of imperfect competition in monopolistic and pure oligopoly. We will learn meaning of monopolistic competition, various characteristics and features of monopolistic competition, predict differentiation and we will also discuss the nature of demand and marginal revenue curves under monopolistic competition. Now let's understand the following concepts before proceeding further. We have discussed how price and output are determined under perfect competition and pure monopoly. But perfect competition and pure monopoly are really found in the actual market situation. Therefore, the conclusion which follows from the model of perfect competition and pure monopoly are found to be inapplicable to the behavior of the most of the business firms in the real world. In order to bring the price theory nearer to the real world, the theory of imperfect competition was developed. The credit for the development of imperfect competition theory goes to John Robinson of Great Britain and E. H. Chamberlain of America. According to them, in the real world markets, both competitive and monopoly elements are present in varying degrees. This makes the actual world market imperfect. Imperfect competition is said to prevail when a firm exercises some influence over the price of his products. This influence over the price of the product is present when either the number of firms is few or if the number of firms is large, products produced by them are differentiated. The important feature of imperfect competition is that the demand curve facing an individual firm working under it is downward sloping. This implies that when a firm working under imperfect competition sells more quantity of its product, its price will fall and when it sells smaller quantity, its price will rise. When the number of firms is few which produce either homogeneous or differentiated product, the market situation is called oligopoly which is a very important form of imperfect competition. When the number of firms are quite large and are producing differentiated products which are close substitutes of each other, the market situation according to the modern technology is called as monopolistic competition which is another important form of imperfect competition. Thus, imperfect competition covers broadly two types of market structure. First, monopolistic competition and the second is oligopoly. The concept put forward by E. H. Chamberlain is more realistic than either perfect competition or pure monopoly. Before Chamberlain, monopoly and competition were regarded as two alternative market structures. One would be absent when the other acts. On the other hand, according to Chamberlain, in most of the real world economic situation, both monopoly and competitive elements are present. Chamberlain's concept of monopolistic competition is thus a blending of competition and monopoly. 
the distinguishing feature of monopolistic competition which makes it as a blending of competition and monopoly is that the products of various firms are not identical but different though they are close substitutes of each other. Besides, under monopolistic competition, there are large number of firms. But unlike perfect competition, they produce differentiated products which are close substitutes of each other. Further, in monopolistic competition, there is freedom of entry into and exit from the industry. Monopolistic competition may be defined as a form of market structures in which there is a large number of firms producing differentiated products which are close substitutes of each other. It is thus clear from above that in monopolistic competition, products are not identical as in perfect competition, but neither is they remote substitutes as in monopoly. The products of various sellers under monopolistic competition are fairly similar, but not the same, and serve as close substitutes of each other. Each seller has a monopoly of his own, product variety, but he has to face a stiff competition from his rival sellers which are selling close substitutes of his product. We thus find that in monopolistic competition there are various monopolists of different products varieties competing with each other. Many examples of monopolistic competition can be given from the Indian scene. For instance, in India, there are various manufacturers of bathing soap which produce different brands such as Lux, Hammam, Godridge, Dove, etc. Thus, the manufacturer of Lux has a monopoly of producing it. Nobody else can produce and sell the bathing soap with the name Lux. But he faces competition from the manufacturers of Hammam, Godridge, etc. which are close substitutes of Lux. The manufacturer of Lux cannot therefore decide about its price output policies by totally ignoring the other varieties of soaps which are its close substitutes. Other examples of monopolistic competition are the producers of toothpaste like Colgate, uh, Dr. West, Westam, Benaka, Forhands, etc., retailers' shops in the towns, barbers' shops in the towns, etc. We thus see that monopolistic competition corresponds more to the real world economic situation than either perfect competition or monopoly. There are broadly speaking two bases of product differentiation. First, differentiation may be based upon certain characteristic of the product itself such as exclusive patented features, trademarks and trade names, special types of packages or wrappers, if any, or difference in the quality, designs, color or style. Real qualitative difference like those of material and design and workmanship are no doubt important means of differentiating products. But imaginary differences created through advertising, the use of attractive packages, the use of trademarks and the brand names are more usual methods by which products are differentiated, even though they are identical or nearly so. Secondly, differentiation may be based upon the conditions surrounding the sales of the products. This means that the product is differentiated if the services rendered in the process of selling the product by one seller or firm are not identical with those rendered by other sellers or firms. Thus, in retail trade, to take only one instance, the conditions surrounding the sale of the product include the convenience of seller's location, his journal tone or character, his way of doing business, his reputation for fair dealing, courtesy, efficiency and all others which make consumers prefer to buy from him. If these factors surrounding the sale of a product are different in case of different sellers, product in each case will be different since the buyers take these factors into consideration while making purchases. These factors like the goodwill, trademarks, etc. serve as a basis of for preferences. It is important to understand the important characteristics of monopolistic competition. The knowledge of these features will enable the student to know this form of market structure is different from perfect competition and oligopoly. We explain below its important features. First one, 
a large number of firms. The first important feature of monopolistic competition is that under it there are relatively large number of firms, each satisfying a small share of the market demand for a product. Because there are large number of firms under monopolistic competition, there exists stiff competition between them. Unlike perfect competition, these large number of firms do not produce perfect substitutes. Instead, they produce and sell products which are close substitutes of each other. This makes the competition among firms real and tough. Further, the fact that there is a large number of firms under monopolistic competition, size of each firm will be relatively small. This is unlike oligopoly where there are a few firms of big size. Second, Product differentiation. The second important feature of monopolistic competition is that the product produced by the various firm is not identical but are slightly different from each other. Though different firms make their products slightly different from others, they remain close substitutes of each other. In other words, the products of various firms working under the monopolistic competition are not the same but they are similar. Therefore, their prices cannot be very much different from each other. It is because of the fact that their products are similar and close substitutes of each other that the various firms under monopolistic competition compete with each other. Third, some influence over the price. Each firm under monopolistic competition produces a product variety which is close substitute of others. Therefore, if a firm lowers the price of its product variety, some customers of other product varieties will switch over to it. This means as it lowers the price of its product variety, quantity demanded of it will be increased. On the other hand, if it raises the price of its product, some of its customers will leave it and buy the similar product from its competing firms. This implies that the demand curve facing a firm working under monopolistic competition slopes downward and marginal revenue curve lies below F. This means that under monopolistic competition, an individual firm is not a price taker but will have some influence over the price of its product. If it fixes a higher price, it will be able to sell a relatively smaller quantity of output and if it fixes a lower price, it will be able to sell more. Thus, under monopolistic competition, a firm has to choose a price output combination which will maximize its profit. Fourth, non price competition. Expenditure on advertisement and other selling cost. An important feature of monopolistic competition is that firms incur a considerable expenditure on advertisements and other selling cost to promote the sales of the products. Promoting sales of the products through advertisement is an important example of non-price competition. The expenditure incurred on advertisement is prominent among the various types of selling cost. The advertisement and the other selling outlays by a firm change the demand for its product as well as its cost. Like the adjustments of price and product, a seller under monopolistic competition will also adjust the amount of head advertisement expenditure so as to maximize his profit. This problem of adjusting one selling outlays is unique to monopolistic competition because the firm under perfect competition has not to incur any expenditure on advertisement. Advertisement expenditure by a purely competitive firm will be without purpose since it can sell as much amount as it please at the going market price without any advertisement expenditure. The rival firms under monopolistic competition nearly compete with each other through advertisement by which they change the consumers' wants for their products and attract more customers. Thus, a full explanation of the equilibrium under monopolistic competition must also involve equilibrium in regard to the amount of expenditure on advertisement and other sales promotion activities. Fifth one, product variation. Another form of non-price competition which a firm under monopolistic competition has to face is the variation in products by various firms. A firm under pure competition does not confront this problem for the product is homogeneous under perfect competition.
the problem of predict variation under monopolistic competition exists because there is a differentiation of predicts of various firms. The firm will try to adjust its predicts so as to conform more to wishes to the buyers. The variation of the predict may refer to a change in the quality of the predict itself. Technical changes, a new design, better material, it may mean new packages or container, it may mean more prompt or courteous service, a different way of doing business. The amount of the product which a firm will be able to sell in the market depends in a part upon the manner in which its product differs from others. Where the possibility of differentiation exists, sales depends upon the skill with which a product is distinguished from others and made to appeal to a particular group of buyers. The profit maximization principle applies to the choice of the nature of the product as to its price. In other words, a firm will choose that the nature of the product given its price which gives its maximum profit. Therefore, in a full explanation of the firm's equilibrium under monopolistic competition, we have also to explain product equilibrium in addition to price equilibrium and selling cost equilibrium. Freedom of entry and exist, that is the sixth one. This is an important feature of monopolistic competition. In monopolistically competitive industry, it is easy for the new firms to enter and the existing firms to leave it. Free entry means that when in the industry uh, firm and are making super normal profits, the new firms enter the industry which leads to the expansion of the output. As a result, price of product tends to fall in the long run. However, it may be noted that under monopolistic competition, entry may not be as easy or free as under perfect competition. Whereas under perfect competition, the new firms which enter the industry can produce the identical products, but under monopolistic competition, the new firms can produce only new brands or product varieties which may initially find it difficult to compete with the already well-established brands and product varieties. In brief, the following are the main features of monopolistic competition. First, there is a quite a large number of firms in the industry. Second, Product produces by the various firms are differentiated but are close substitutes of each other. Third, firms spend a large amount of money on advertisements and other types of selling costs to promote the sales of the product. Thus, there is a lot of non-price competition under monopolistic competition. Fourth, there is a free entry into and exist from the industry. Fifth, firm try to adjust or vary their product so as to confirm it more to consumers' preferences. The product variation is also a form of non-price competition. It is important to understand the nature of the demand curve facing an individual firm under monopolistic competition. As we have explained in the previous chapters, demand curve facing a firm working under perfect competition is perfectly elastic at the ruling market price since it has absolutely no control over the price of the product. On the contrary, a firm working under monopolistic competition enjoys some control over the price of its product since its product is somewhat differentiated from others. If a firm under monopolistic competition raises the price of its product, it will find some of its consumers going away to buy the other products. As a result, the quantity demanded of its product will fall. On the contrary, if it lowers the price, will find that the buyers from other varieties of the product will start purchasing its product and as a result, the quantity demanded of its product will increase. It therefore follows that the demand curve facing an individual firm under monopolistic competition slopes downward. If a firm working under monopolistic competition wants to increase the sale of its product, it must lower the price if it's prepared to sacrifice some sales. To put it in another way, a firm working under monopolistic competition can lower the price by increasing its levels of sales and outputs. 
A purely competitive firm merely adjusts the quantity of the output it has to produce, price being a given and a constant datum for it. But a firm working under monopolistic competition faces a more complicated problem. It cannot merely adjust quantity at a given price because each quantity changed by it will bring about a change in the price at which the product can be sold. Now consider figure 1.1. DD is a demand curve affecting an individual firm under monopolistic competition. At price OP, the quantity demanded is OM. Therefore, the firms would be able to sell OM quantity at price OP. If it wants to sell greater quantity ON, then it will have to go to OL. If it restricts its quantity to OG, price will rise to OH. Thus, every quantity changed by it entails a change in price at which the product can be sold. Thus, the problem faced by a firm working under monopolistic competition is to choose the price quantity combination which is optimum for it, that is, which yields its maximum possible profits. Demand curve facing a firm will be his average revenue curve. Thus, the average revenue curve of the monopolistically competitive firm slopes downward through its length. Since average revenue curve slopes downward, marginal revenue curve lies below it. This follows from usual average marginal relationship. The implication of marginal revenue curve lying below average revenue curve is that the marginal revenue will be less than the price or average revenue. When a firm working under monopolistic competition sells more, the price of its product falls. Marginal revenue therefore must be less than the price. In figure 1.2, AR is the average revenue curve of the firm under monopolistic competition and slopes downward. MR is the marginal curve and lies below. AR curve at the quantity OM, average revenue or price is OP and marginal revenue is MQ which is less than OP. In an earlier chapter, we have explained that the average and the marginal revenue at a level of output are related to each other through price elasticity of demand and in this connection, we derive the following formula. The formula is MR equals to AR times E minus 1 divided by E, where E stands for price elasticity of demand. So finally, let's quickly summarize our learnings for today. We have learned today the chapter of monopolistic competition. In this script, we have discussed the introduction of monopolistic competition and pure oligopoly. We have discussed the concept of monopolistic competition and its meaning in detail. Also, the features and the characteristics of monopolistic competition are discussed in the session today. Product differentiation in monopolistic competition and the nature of demand and marginal revenue curve under monopolistic competition has also been learned from the script. So that gets us towards the end of today's episode. We are ending here the first part of the chapter of monopolistic competition and we will see you again discussing about the next part of the same topic on more wide variety. Till then, have a great time. Thank you.